In this video, I would like to demonstrate the capability of API Builder to dynamically create connectors from API definitions. And in that case, I'm using an API definition, which is located in the Amplify Unified Catalog. Um, consider this video as an extension to the soap to rest use case, um, because I'm going to extend that API and make it a little bit more user-friendly, because it makes sense not to ask the user to provide the location information directly. Maybe it makes sense to add an additional endpoint saying, hey, give me the IP address and we translate that IP address into location and then you'll get back um, airports to that location. And for that, I want to use an IP geolocation service which takes in the IP address and then it translates into location and then we are getting airports for that location. And in order to do that, I'm using a connector which is automatically generated based on an entry in the unified catalog. So let's see how that works. Um, this is my API Builder project as it was um, as I left the soap to rest demo, where we have that um, endpoint latitude, longitude, and radius. And now I went back to my stoplight design editor and I have added a new endpoint which takes in the IP address and again the radius information and for that inf for that IP location now I expect to get back the number of endpoints. Um, <clears throat> to take that over the process is a little bit different. Uh, first of all I would like to mention that I have taken over the endpoint as it was in my API Builder project um, as I have added the flow to it. So that means I have taken that Swagger definition uh, and modified in, in um, Stoplight because it contains interesting entries pointing to the flow which is attached to an endpoint. And so this is what I have done. And then I have added a new endpoint and now I can take over that API definition back to API Builder and just override what I have actually in API Builder. And when I reload my API Builder project, I should see two endpoints when I have restarted my API Builder project, npm start. I should see two endpoints, one still pointing to, to the flow we have, and the other one, which is the new endpoint, not yet having a flow. So, but we need a flow, that's why I'm going to create a flow and I don't want to start from scratch. I would like to um, use the existing flow as a template and for that I'm, I'm just adding a dummy method just to get the valid name of the flow. I save that thing before because before I'm doing that, that flow directory only contains the flow which is used by the first endpoint. And when I have saved it, the flow is restarted and now I'm getting two different uh, flow endpoints. And what I would like to do is to take the flow definition from the first endpoint into the second endpoint, save that thing, restart the API Builder project, and then we can reload that API definition. And now you should see or we should see the same flow as we have for the first flow. Okay, and obviously you can also change the name of the flow and that kind of stuff, which I haven't done yet. Okay, um, now what should do, I need to talk to that IP geolocation service and I could do that also with that REST connector here and then orchestrate the REST call in the way I need, but API Builder provides a much more convenient way to do that um, by creating automatically connectors out of API definitions. And for that, I would like to use the Amplify Unified Catalog, which gives me access to all the APIs um, my organization has already registered. That APIs might come from anywhere, internal, external, it doesn't matter. And there is an API definition, which is called IP API, and this is the service I would like to use, and I would like to have a connector in my API Builder project. And to get a connector for that, I'm using the command line interface of API Builder or of Amplify. First, what I have done, I have installed the Amplify command line interface itself. Then I have added a plugin for the command line interface for the API Builder. I have already logged in into Amplify Central. And this is what I would like to do. I would like to get the catalog for my API Builder project. 
And instead of initializing a new project out of that, I would like to step in to my existing, oh, sorry, wrong window. I would like to step in my existing window and would say get catalog. Give me the entries for the catalog I have access to. Now the command line interface is fetching all available entries. And if I would have, let's say, a pretty big number of APIs, I would go and search for IP, and then I'm selecting that API. And now the API definition and then image is downloaded into a special folder, which is Swagger. If I now go into that API Builder project again and have a look into that Swagger folder, you see this is what happened in the background. It has downloaded the API definition into that API Builder project, and API Builder itself is doing the rest. When I'm restarting my API Builder project and reload the flow, at the moment there's only one connector, that generic one, and when I reload it, then there's a new one which I can use it as part of my flow. So let's wire that up and say that should happen at the beginning. And now we know that uh, get location for IP. We know there is a parameter which is called IP params, and then we hand over the parameter IP address for that location service, and that should go into the location info field. This is location info. Um, yeah, why not save that? And now I would like to try that out to see in the console what happened in the background and the radius radius is 30 miles. So execute that flow. Again, nothing seen because we haven't handled the response. But this is what, what I wanted to see. You see that the node is executed and it's writing the result into location info. And the location info, the result is that we get status, we get headers, and this is the important thing I would like to have. I would like to have um, data. And um, the data inside contains the latitude and the longitude. So and this is what I would like to do now in my set soap message. So that means when this is successful, then I would like to modify I need to be careful here in the background not to select anything. I would like to say mustard actually has only access to the params, but now we need also to provide location info. That's why we provide the whole context. And now I'm editing, I'm editing my uh, mustard. First, the radius now still comes from params, but now it is a child of that data field. And we have the data, which is in location info longitude and this is the latitude information okay and try it out execute that flow and it's obviously working you know from the previous video that this soap service is a mock that's why i would like to check in the background if this works but no it's not yet working so that means longitude and my soap request and latitude is empty and let's have a look what is the reason this is written into location info we have data i think i missed that data part so that means let me go back into the template location info and here we need to say not the headers not this um, response message we would like to have the data retry again make sure not to select anything and now let's have a look here now the longitude is filled from the dynamically resolved um, field. And this is the latitude and the radius um, is also coming from that IP address. So now let's make one more thing to say when that location couldn't be resolved, then I would like to say, let's say location found. And here's the same, I would like to check if uh, equals, let's say, the source is uh, location info. And I know that this service is telling me as part of that field, let me check, of part of that field status success, if the location has been found or not. So that means it is inside data, location info, data, 
And then there's a field which is called status. And that must be half the value of success. So that means let me rewire that. I get the location info. Is location found? Yes, it is found. And then I'm saying another HTTP response, which is a 404 location not found. Like that. Uh, I think, yeah, location not found. And the response number should be 404. And then I can say here, I would like to have a string, something like that. Or can I also say an object? Let's say location not found or error. Yeah, something like that. Error location not found. Let's say it like that. Okay. And that should be returned if um, the location is not found. So that means location found, no, location not found. And then this one is returned with a 404. That's the idea. So that means this is still working. And if I give, let's say, a totally stupid IP or something not very useful, then it's saying location not found. OK. And let's save that filter or save that policy. Try it from over here by reloading that screen as well. And now check the other endpoint and saying this is my IP address, 888. And the radius should be in more miles. It doesn't matter. But it's working. And this one here is not working. Location not found, 404. Perfect. OK. Thanks for watching. I hope that was useful to, let's say, create, let's say, showcase uh, API builder use cases and hopefully more to come.